just drove like three hours from San Diego all the way to uh, Salvation Mountain. It's literally in the middle of nowhere. God never fails, Salvation Mountain. We're here, it's right over there. We're gonna go head up now, check it out, see how weird it is. Basically everything you can possibly see is painted. Even the stuff on the ground is painted. It's seriously just in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around it except a bunch of just trashed properties. All right, first steps onto Salvation Mountain. It says wear soft shoes just in case, because it's actually just uh, hay bales covered with like plaster and then just painted. The guy just uh, scavenged at the local dump to be able to build what you see, Salvation Mountain, so. Let's go hike up it. Looks like there's a, some fresh paint going on here. There's so many empty paint cans. It's just like a bunch of caves winding through this big building. Looks like the builder used a bunch of tree branches to hold everything in place and they just painted everything. Painted all the branches, all the walls, just everything. You can basically find like hidden Jesuses everywhere. There's a belt up there that's holding this entire branch up. I wonder what would happen if that fell. All right, we made it up to the top, Salvation Mountain. Right here behind me, we got God is. And then right in front of us, right down here is uh, love. So you know, this is the uh, famous Salvation Mountain. God is love. And then we got the, uh, the big heart right down there. It's kind of a view of just nothing. I mean, there's just nothing around us for miles. There's a bunch of RVs out there and stuff. Kind of gives me like Burning Man vibes, even though I've never been to Burning Man. This is the top of Salvation Mountain. This is, uh, this is God. We made it up. It's a really short hike. Here's the uh, big cross, and yeah, this is it. It's pretty cool. I like the paint. It's a good view. A view of nothing, but it's pretty impressive. Basically, just as a personal expression of his religion. Got back from Slab City, the city with no laws. That's the place. That's the city with no laws. Um, we're waiting because there's a huge, long train that's just stopped in the middle of the road. But anyways, we went to the library. We talked to some people, met some people. We met a guy that lives there full time. We asked him how many people live here, and he said in the summer it gets up to 130 degrees, and a lot of people don't. A lot of people can't handle that heat. So he said usually in the summer there's about 100 to 200 people, but he said in the winter when it's colder and you know more manageable of a temperature, he said there's gonna be up to 2,000 people living here, which is kind of impressive based on like how small of an area it actually is. He said people just basically come in and just like set up camp. There's a lot of RVs that people live in. But we were asking him how like how does this place run? How does it function? And this other guy answered and he said basically people come here to do whatever they want 
whenever they want, however they want. Basically, they just said they govern themselves. They don't really have too much run-in with like the law or the police or anything. They kind of have like their own personal law enforcement. Basically, if they have anyone causing trouble or causing violence in the community, they just kick them out and don't let them stay there anymore. But yeah, Slab City, it's, it's a really, really cool place. It's super interesting. There's kind of a lot of, of like trash because it's not really regulated. It's, it's technically like off the grid. It's not an actual city, but the police, I mean, they know about it. They just don't come here that often. They said the border patrol sometimes comes around because it is, it's, it's like about 60 miles, I think from the, uh, the Mexican border. But yeah, that was Slab City. Thanks for watching.